Hello, Laurel. Hello. I'm so happy to be here with you. I am so happy too. And I want to introduce you to everyone because you have been my coach last summer and have tremendously helped me in my soul work because you do help people to discover their soul work and, and really what their calling is in life. And you did a superb job because I think right now I am making a living interviewing people internationally. I'm very, very happy about that. So thank you. Thank you, Laurel. Um, it's an honor to be on your journey with you. I'm delighted, delighted. Uh, you're awesome. And um, I want to introduce your book to everyone, Born to Do, The Practical Guide to Loving Your Work, because you're the champion in that, and it's a great book. And I would like to um, hear from you so that everybody can understand what is the soul work? How do you define soul work, and how can we find our soul work? Um, I thought a lot about the right terms for this, and other people call it calling. Um, I define soul work as the absolute best way you can use your passions and purpose. So you're a good example that yeah. people can yeah. see. <laughs> and um, sometimes our soul work pays us, and sometimes we have to get other work to pay us because you know I consider for example parenting to be soul work for some people gardening to be soul work for some people um, and sometimes we need something called bridge work to help us you know be financially stable while we do our soul work or what or while we're learning our soul work mm. Mm, so, so can you? So, so the bridge work is before we get our soul work, so that we can pay the bills. But what is really the distinction there, though? There is a distinction. There is some kind of yeah. The, yeah, soul work is the absolute best use of our passions and purpose. It's our calling. It's what we're born to do. You know, that's the name of the book. But that's what were you when you when you ask people what were you born to do. Um, a mother who loves more than anything taking care of her children will say being a mom. An artist who's passionate about creating stuff will say, you know, art. Um, if I ask you that, what is your answer? <laughs> Interviewing people and spreading the messages and spreading all this information across the globe. <laughs> right, right. So, so that is your soul work. Bridge work, if it's done properly, allows you to get to your soul work, allows you. So for some people, it's um, some other sort of income producing thing. I think the luckiest of us get to do our soul work and get paid for it. Um, or bridge work helps us prepare and create space for our soul work. So sometimes bridge work is our going to school, you know. Yeah. Um, but it is something that allows you to still have time to work on your soul work and make it happen. It's not right. just a job. Right. It's a mouse. Right. Soul. Just a job. I call just a job unremarkable soul sucking work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so bridge work is still remarkable. It still gives you energy and time to do your soul work. And that's, that's a really important distinction because I think a lot of people get stuck in what they call B jobs. Yeah. Um, and then they don't have any juice for their soul work. Yeah. There, there, a lot of people say, yeah, but there is, you know, this, I would love to do this, but I don't know how to make money from it. I don't know how to make it happen. You know, what is the first step? There's this great quote in the book by Rumi where it says, let yourself be silently drawn by the strong pull of what you really love. It will not, it will, it will not lead you astray. Can you comment on that? Yeah, that's one of my favorite quotes. I think people sometimes forget what they love and they don't allow themselves to follow what they love. They get stopped by, especially now in the world economy and everyone's afraid that they're going to lose their job or lose income. Um, first and foremost, you should slow down enough to understand what you love and to follow what you love. And sometimes that's people, sometimes that's going to a particular country, sometimes that's learning something new, sometimes it's it's going back to something you used to love and you forgot that you loved it. Um, so 
Following your passions cannot be a bad thing in any way. And then it's like there's this pool. Once you find it, there's like this pool and this natural flow and this guidance that this, this, yeah, this pool. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes bigger than you. I mean, I think you've experienced that. It's the snowball effect, you know, it's, it's, um, it does pull you and it energizes you. And when you follow things that you love, when you study things that you're interested in, when you, you try to master something that you might not be good at yet, but you want to be better at, it does pull you. It does energize you. And um, it's not that it's going to be easy, but it's going to be rewarding. Fulfilling. Fulfilling, yeah. Sometimes people think that the pool means easy. No, <laughs> not necessarily easy, but fulfilling, rewarding, meaningful, um, ultimately satisfying. Yeah, and, and it takes courage. You, you talk about courage in this, and there are some exercises to really open up this space because it takes guts also, doesn't it, to, to go for what we love. Yeah, you know, my work, my work comes out of studying people who, who were super satisfied at work, not just happy at work, but loved what they did. And that was a theme that came up over and over again, that these people were worth, they were persistent, they were courageous, they took crazy risks, they made outlandish promises to themselves. One of the first people I interviewed... Um, is a casting director and she started her career as an actor mm -hmm. and her goal her goal out of the blue from her heart was to become Lily Tomlin's stand-in which is kind of a crazy goal but she loved Lily Tomlin and she thought she looked like her I don't think she looked like her at all but she got that gig she got that job and she was Lily Tomlin's stand-in for several movies um, you know, and she, she, she tells the story and it took a lot of gumption to go after that, you know, so yeah. gumption, courage, risk, it's all part of the, it's all part of the story of following your, finding your soul work. So what, what, what does make it that some people just don't, don't achieve that? What, what is, what is the failure or the biggest challenge or that you see working with people? Well, I think. I think, I believe if everyone puts the work in, in the time in, in the soul search part of this process and really do, does the internal work, that anyone can find and follow soul work. It may take time, it may take effort, but I think our fundamental problem is most people don't believe they can have that or they deserve that. You know, we, we live in a society where dreams aren't necessarily encouraged or they're for so like dreams are okay for celebrities they're okay for you know children but um you know someday you, ha you have to grow up and give up your dreams and that that's sort of part of our society it's very sad it doesn't have to be that way mm. no it doesn't it doesn't at all that's a very good point we and i think sometimes i tell parents Sometimes people who have children especially feel like they have to be responsible, but I tell them one of the best things they can do for their children is to go after their dreams because children learn about career and work and enjoying work from their parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So relationship, you talk also in your book about relationship and how it is important and how those can change. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I've studied a lot of other people's work and primarily career books and business books are written by men and they don't necessarily address relationships. And I think, um, you know, I was taught by my mother that relationships and family, um, both on and off the job are the most important thing and having healthy relationships are the most important thing. And as I studied and worked with people, I realized that it's very difficult to love what you do if, A, it takes you away from family and friends so much that you aren't able to develop that part of your life, or B, you don't enjoy the people at work. <laughs> it's hard to love what you do if you don't enjoy your clients, enjoy your colleagues. So 
Um, I think fundamentally having healthy relationships with your family, your friends, your clients, your leaders um, is, is really important. Mm, and if we don't have that in either of those areas of our life, what do, what do you recommend right there? Well, start with one relationship. <laughs> you know, I think I think finding one friend or one family member that you can trust. If you don't have that in your life, go out and find it. You know, one one great relationship can change your destiny, can change your life, and then build from there. Because it can be it can be painful. Those moments. I remember this summer, and and I'm sure you remember how it was very threatening to. My parents, for example, even if you know I was 32, to to see me in this situation of of, of a total change and of financial collapse and this and that, and so it, it it scares others and 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 people that love us want to protect us, but it just creates even more fear. So, yeah, it, it's you know it's it's um in the relationship category around drastic change you bring up such a beautiful and important point people around us want us to be safe and so when we make these changes and go for our dreams they will get afraid you know and the best thing you can tell them is don't be afraid for me you know I need your love and support I don't need your fear you know and I understand your fear it makes perfect sense, but what I really need now is to be loved and listened to and supported. Mm, and that right there, that advice really, really helped me. And I remember it was at a point where I couldn't love myself. I was receiving, you know, uh, fears and from everyone. And at some point, you you helped me take this step. Listen, I do not have to stay here. I can make another decision. It, I mean, it, it really, you were like this supporting structure when everything else was collapsing and you were just, you know, bringing this love and, and, uh, and just like a friend, you know, this support. And that, that was, that was, that was, that was enormous at the time. But I think the book is really well set also and structured so that it can, it can be like uh, your, you know, your friend too and your support. Is that why you created that? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been doing this for about 13 or 14 years and not everyone can afford a coach. Yeah. And so I, we wanted to share the, the materials in a way that um, you could do it yourself in a self-paced program. Mm -hmm. um, or you can actually bring friends together and do it with your, your friends or your, you know, colleagues or um, you know, you could even do a group online on Ning or something, but um, it's a great it's a great tool to just bring together people, not unlike the artist way. I know a lot of people. I'm very familiar with Julia Cameron's work. I know that you've interviewed her, and um, I've always been fascinated with how people get together still to to do the artist way work together. So we have instructions in there for doing the work with a group and and or on your own and um we think it's going to help a lot of people. Mm. So what are you up to now? Well, um we just we're we're launching the book and um talking to you is is part of that. Uh we are um, launching a new website, so we just changed the name of our company. Our company has become Three Giant Leaps, which is the name of our, our model. Um, and we have some coaches. We're actually getting some international coaches. I just finished training someone in Dubai and someone in England. Cool. And we're working with a group in China that wants to uh, take on um, learning some of our things and bringing bringing them to China so we're very excited about that and I I wasn't it wasn't my intention Lulu but I think this book is also going to be really great for young people like high school seniors through college people who've recently graduated because I think yeah that totally really needs, needs needs this work and and there's stories in the book you know not I think a lot of books that are out there and one of the ones that I love is called the element um, talk about celebrities and I love stories about celebrities but the this these stories are about 
ordinary people making transitions and yeah. I'm hoping that that will inspire people of all ages but I'm particularly excited about bringing this to college age kids and yeah, I Things can like definitely that. see that. And the format is so light and breathy and you can write in it and I can I can see yeah, this definitely would be a great graduating uh graduating uh gift. Yes, I think so, yeah. My mother my mother's um calling all our friends and telling them to buy it for graduation for their grandchildren, so <laughs> I think she's on to something there. Yeah, definitely. Because the, the, the sooner we start uh, seeing that we have a soul work here to do, the, the sooner we're aware about this, then the more it can unfold and then we can let the magic happen. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been so much fun. Thank you for having me. Hop.